Hey folks, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off your purchases, visit squarespace.com and enter offer code MARK, M-A-R-C, at checkout. A better web starts with your website. All right, let's do the show. Okay, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fucksters? What the fuckstables? What the fuckholics? What the fuckadelics? It's Mark Marin. This is WTF. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I want to thank people uh, right up front for coming out to the trip in the house at the Steve Allen Theater on Tuesday. We had a nice, uh, exciting uh, hour plus, maybe hour and a half jam session where I mixed it up a bit. It's interesting when I'm doing these shows. Uh, I'm at the Trippany House at the Steve Allen Theater, uh, September 30th, October 14th, October 21st, uh, just to do these workout shows, doing some of the stuff that I was working on before at these shows and, uh, and also seeing what else happens. But I, I feel the drive. I feel compelled to, when people have seen me before working out stuff to find something else, put it on the line, push the envelope. Uh, the, uh, the lovely and talented and horrendous uh, Dave Anthony open for me. So come out to those shows if you want. You can go to WTFPod.com, go to the calendar, and uh, get the link. I don't know how many tickets are left. It's a small room. There's parking. It's a cheap ticket, and uh, it's nice. And I'll hang out and say hi afterwards. Well, you know, I'm trying to get some work done. Uh, big news, folks. I don't want to forget to tell you this. Uh, Marin on IFC got picked up for a third season. Uh, we're going to get into it. Got 13 more episodes to write to shoot, to act in, to produce. Very exciting. I'm living my dream, and uh, I'm thrilled to get the opportunity to do a third season of television, something I never thought I would do. And, you know, we've got a good groove going. I know the guys pulled in a couple of new writers. Jerry Stahl is going to be on staff this year. Dave Anthony's there. Michael Jammon, Seaver Glarum, Sean Russell, uh, and myself are going to, uh, we're going to start writing a television show. 13 episodes of it. I think I got some shit. I think it's going to be fine. And I want to thank IFC for the opportunity. We're excited to do it. And uh, I'm glad I get to give you some more TV. All right. Yay me. All right. Let's go over some of these dates before I get into things. The LA Podcast Festival is on Saturday, September 27th. I'll be doing a live podcast there. I'll also be appearing on Aisha Tyler's podcast that weekend. That's at the Sofitel here in Los Angeles. You can go to wtfpod.com calendar and uh, get the link for that. Litquake. I wanted to talk about that. I'll be in San Francisco, California, October 12th. I'll be at Litquake. It's uh, Mark Marin in conversation with uh, Jack Bulware, who's an old friend of mine. So that should be exciting. We got the New York Comedy Festival coming up November 7th. That's sold out. Comics come home at the Boston Garden November 8th. Uh, that's going to be an amazing show. This is a, you know, this is a, a benefit for the Cam Neely Foundation. Bill Burr, Lenny Clark, Jimmy Fallon, Craig Ferguson, Jim Gaffigan, Mark Marin, more to be announced. Holy shit. That's a big lineup. That is on November 8th. We got, you know, we got things to do. We got, uh, we got Nick Stoller on the uh, podcast today. And I, I gotta be honest with you. I wasn't hard on him, but I did bust some balls. I, there's, there's no doubt about that. Nick Stoller is a director, if you don't know. He directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall. He directed Get Him to the Greek. Um, and, uh, and speaking of that, he directed Neighbors. Uh, that comes out next week, actually, on, uh, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital HD on the 23rd. But we got an opportunity to chat. We had some common friends, but the bottom line was, in this conversation is that uh is that he went to uh he went to Harvard. Oh, he also did uh, Muppets Most Wanted. He did uh, the five year engagement. He's a comedy film director, wanted to talk to him. Didn't know him that well. Nice guy. Went to Harvard. Problem with me. I don't I, I don't have, I don't really know if I examine it as closely as I should that I have a fundamental problem with people who go to Harvard. I don't I don't judge them as people. How can you say that, Mark? You just said you have a problem with people that go to Harvard. 
All right. I, I guess in my mind, pow, look out. Just shit my pants. Just coffee.coop available at WTFpod.com. Hey, Harvard University. Harvard. That was a place I didn't go. That was a place I could never get into. That was a place that was always in my mind. If you went to Harvard, automatically you were given the keys to the kingdom. Automatically you were taught the way to be a complete and, and full intellectual. Automatically you had cachet in the world. It, automatically you got the best education anywhere and y- you were an amazing person. It turns out that that one of those is bullshit. A lot of it definitely true to some degree. I mean, I talked to Conan O'Brien about it on this show that there is some there is some sort of fraternal order that is honored around the world in the halls of power that one is uh has access to if one goes to Harvard. But in my mind it just stood out as this place that, you know, how could you be a real intellectual if you didn't go to Harvard? I had it put in I had I had it on this pedestal and that that there was something about it. I was always a bright guy. I think I was a smart kid. I was one of those people that uh, the teachers used to say, well, Mark's got a, a motivational problem. He's very smart, but he's not motivated. I guess that's what you call sleeping in class. I guess that's what you call ditching class. I don't remember anything I fucking learned in high school. I guess nobody really does, but I don't remember really being there. I remember a few teachers, freshman, sophomore, and junior year. I was like, I don't want to go to college. I don't fucking want to do it. Just gonna hang out, man. I, I really didn't want to go to college and I was almost failing out of high school. And then somehow or another, my senior year of college, I, my senior year of high school, I freaked out, panicked, and I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. My parents got a few bucks. They'll pay to get me out of here. I should take that opportunity to get the hell out of here. And I scrambled and applied to a bunch of colleges, a bunch of community colleges. And And uh, didn't get in anywhere because my high school transcript sucked. I don't even think I took the SATs. I do. I got into uh, Boston University's CBS program, the College of Basic Studies, which was uh, I. It didn't didn't sound like a good idea to me. And eventually, I I got into uh, Curry College in Milton, Massachusetts, which had a, I think, one of the best programs for. uh, some learning disabilities, dyslexia, uh, in the country, but they also were rather lenient to, uh, to, uh, middle class people who could afford to send their high school fuck ups to a small liberal arts college outside of Boston. So I went there for a year and, uh, just put my, I just, I decided I was going to be a doctor and I just focused and I studied the shit out of everything. I remember spending like 12 hours in a library trying to fully understand photosynthesis. And I did it. I can understand it. I knew how it worked. I got I got straight A's almost my freshman year. Just pushed it. But I couldn't go to Harvard, man. It was too late. It was too late. Then I went to BU, transferred to BU, BGU. And again, I don't know how the hell I got through college, but I do know. I do know that just across the way that Harvard with their crew, with their preppies, with their well-bred folks, the whole legacy of college just used to hang over me. The, the legacy or the idea of Harvard was profound to me. I thought that people who went to Harvard must be better than me. Perhaps they are. I never could get the hang of how to contextualize anything educationally. I couldn't get the hang. I I don't know that I could write a term paper for you right now. I don't know if I could write a paper on something. I could not figure out how to do basic shit. Everything is always happening in the immediate moment for me. It's very hard. It took me years to be able to put anything into any sort of structure or system or context. Everything I had to engage with viscerally and immediately. Like with writing a paper, I mean... I would spend hours writing papers. I got to write a 10 page paper and I'd write 10 pages of opening paragraphs. I couldn't fucking make the point. I didn't understand. You got opening paragraph, then you, you make an outline, you support it, you support it, you support it. You know, all your different areas, then you write a conclusion. I just, I could not figure it out. I like the, the thought of it right now is giving me anxiety. Just to write a short term paper would drive me fucking nuts because I know I couldn't do it. I wrote a book. It doesn't matter. I don't know if I could write a good paper. It was only up until a few years ago. I had an incomplete in an English class. I, for some reason, I focused on romantic literature for the year. 
uh, that I had a focus, like I was an English major with a focus in romantic lit, and that was a nine o'clock class, and I had drinking to do, so I didn't make it very often to that class, and when I did, I was not really together, and that was Yates and Shelley and Byron and Keats. And I read the hell out of those things. Sometimes I read them the night before, but I read them and I, you know, and I had my own interpretation of them. That was how I rolled. I will interpret this as if it's fresh for me happening right now. I don't care when they wrote. I don't care who influenced them. I don't care where they fall in history or what they were up against. How do I feel about reading this right now? That's how I did it. That's how I studied. So in other words, I graduated with honors in college. But it was only because I was full of fucking charm. You can charm yourself through an English degree. And I did a film studies minor, which was just actively and excitedly watching movies and learning about movies and just treating everything as if it's just happening for me. I was very good at writing very engaged readings of things. And that got me through. But still, there's some that hung over me, man. Fucking Harvard, man. Right across the way. If I had only gone there, perhaps I would have been able to contextualize things. Perhaps I would have understood structure. Perhaps I would have been able to write a good term paper. Perhaps I would have uh, uh, automatically become an intellectual of sorts. But I did go on to become sort of a pseudo-intellectual for a long time. And now I'm pretty diligent at not talking about anything I don't know about. Uh, And if I don't know about it, I'll say I don't know about it. But I do have opinions about things. And I still don't put them into context very often. Uh, I just react to them. I'm a reactor. That's what I am. Folks, you know about Squarespace. I talk about it all the time. It's the best way to design your own website and online store. It's fast and simple and has tons of support. And now if you make a website using Squarespace, you have a chance to win a year's worth of the best possible Squarespace package. Just put the site up on your social media accounts using the hashtag WTF Squarespace. We'll keep an eye on all your links, and then we'll pick the best one at the end of the month. The winner gets a free year of the Squarespace business package, the full Monty of Squarespace services. So go design your website right now. Plans start at just $8 a month, and if you sign up for a year, you get your domain name thrown in for free. Start a trial with no credit card required, and start building your website today. Visit squarespace.com, and for a free trial and 10% off your purchases, enter offer code MARK at checkout. That's squarespace.com, offer code MARK, M-A-R-C, MARK. Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. You dig it? Harvard, man. I couldn't got I couldn't have gotten in. There was nothing I could do. I wasn't focused. I don't even know. Like there's part of me that I think I I could go back to college now, maybe learn a few things. But I don't know if I really could. I don't know if any, I'm any better a student. I don't know if my brain has changed in those ways that would make it, you know, more palatable or more would absorb. I think I did learn. A, I, if I learned anything in school, not that you're asking me, but if I learned anything, it was to fully engage in all of my interests that's what i did i had the time i acted i wrote plays i wrote for the paper i wrote poems did some photography thought about stuff got very excited about a lot of different movies and art and things That was the best i could do i took the time to do it and i had some guidance in doing it but man i could not fucking contextualize anything My brain just had no compartmentalization. Everything's always happening for me right now. Right now. Right now. This is the first time I ever set eyes on this painting. Who cares about the history? How do I feel about it? That, where was that's the college I went to? How, how do you get uh, grades at this school? Just tell us how you feel about something. Get excited about it one way or the other. And if you do a good job at getting excited about it and engaging with it, we'll give you a good grade. That's the way I approach college. But Nick Stoller went to Harvard. We're going to talk to him now. Are those fucking dogs going to do that all t- the whole time? Sorry, I brought all my dogs. Yeah, what is with you Hollywood types? I can't. And your animals dogs. with their outfits. I hate dogs in offices. I, I like. I'm not a. I'm not anti-dog, but I. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't connect anymore. 
I don't connect. Like, I don't feel the urge. If it's not a pug or a French bulldog, I'm yeah. not touching it. No. Don't need to. If it's just a filthy kind of like, what kind of dog is that? Kind of, you know, uh, retriever, setter-ish thing? Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Like, I'll pet a dog, but it's yeah. not, I don't, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I don't connect with them. Really? It's like a fluffy pillow or something. What do you, are, <laughs> I do you have the same connection. Are, do you, are you bad with animals in general? I know I'm not bad with them. I just don't really care about, I don't care. What kind of fucking person are you, I Nick? don't care. What do you mean you don't care? I like people. I care about people. Uh, do you? <laughs> kind of. Do you have pet people? I have, I have some slaves. <laughs> I treat them really well, though. So how's this uh, How's this neighbor's movie doing? Like, how many millions of dollars? The fucking dog. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, in the like the first weekend. It made, I can't it, believe that dog shut up. It, it worked. <laughs> That's the be- Let's just take a minute to savor that. What an amazing moment that was. That was incredible. You have a magic power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so I was uh, rehearsing. Okay. So what? It, how? What did it do? Like, I want to know what it feels like to just by proximity to say the amount of money it, you're going to save. It was. Uh, it's. It was forty nine million dollars. Holy shit! It was crazy. So you're sitting at home. Yeah. This no, was, I was on a party bus. You were. We went on a party bus for the opening night. For the opening night, you rented a party bus. Yeah. Who? Universal, I think, rented us a party bus. Well, whose idea was that? It was, I think it was the Point Grey, Seth, Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, they produced the movie, and I sure. think it was there. I've talked to them in here. Yes. Yeah. It was a good interview. Yeah, they're good guys. They're good. Yeah. They're good guys. Nice Jewish guys from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Canadian Can- Jews. Canadian comic Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so you rent a bus because mm-hmm. they want to like, let's, let's party, and uh, what, what was the angle? What do you do on a bus? Was it just you do for the you? Full, the full douche. Yeah. <laughs> you, that's the full douche. What do you think you do? <laughs> you drive around. You check your like stats. <laughs> you check the movie stats. You high five for like six hours. <laughs> full douche. It's the full douche. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think? Smoke some weed. There was. I think they did. I didn't even do that. I just drank a few beers. Yeah. So okay, but like you knew it was going to do all right. But I guess yeah. you don't, do you? This one seemed like it was going to do well. I've never. Ha- I haven't had this this crazy an experience before. So yeah. But you've had stinkers, right? I've had, I've done four movies. This is my fourth movie. It's only your fourth movie? It's only my fourth, the fourth movie I've directed, yeah. I've well, you've been involved. Movies. We'll go back. Yeah. Right. Okay, so. But I've had, of those, of the th- three previous movies, the first one, Sarah Marshall, did well. Great movie. Oh, thank you. I like that movie. I watch it, and I like Jason Segel. Yeah. I, there was some real heart in that movie. Oh, thanks. Yes. Thank you. Get Him to the Greek was the second movie. That did very well. I, it did I well. enjoyed that movie. That was fun. No, I, so. Not as much depth as Sarah Marshall, but good. No, it's a different kind of movie. All right. Uh, well, as long then, as we understand each other. And then the third one, Five Year Engagement, oh, didn't, see. it didn't do as well. No, why? It didn't. You know, I think it didn't do as well because it wasn't a wish fulfillment idea. Um, what, explain that. People didn't, people didn't want to be in a five year engagement. Is it's what too I long. Think. It's too long. Yeah, it wasn't something that you wanted to be a part Women of. Women aren't going to be like, yes. Exactly. Yes. It, that, <laughs> exactly. Women that sounds like, great. Women aren't like, sign me up for that. Yeah, so. for the five-year engagement. Exactly. That's their biggest nightmare. It's their, it, Exactly. It's their biggest nightmare. But you didn't think to... about that going in? No, I didn't. No, you learn on each movie. So that that's w- a new, a did new that, thing. Did it break even? I think at the end of the day it did, yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a disaster. Unmitigated not, disaster. No, because it wasn't expensive. Right. Know? But it wasn't, but it was, it could have, I wish it had done better. But this movie... Zach Efron, not known for being hilarious. But he's pretty funny. If you watch, like, his, you know, movies, you can see... Like, I watched... There's a 17 again. Yeah. I'm sure you're... I know you're a huge oh, fan. Oh, that's but... right. He was all right on that. Yeah, that was the uh, the one where he goes back and... No, that was okay. Yeah. That was with John uh, with Tom Lennon. Yeah. He plays his friend. His, his friend who's in Star Wars. And, and uh, who who plays the woman again? Was it Judd's wife? Yeah, Leslie. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. She's funny in it. She probably hates being referred to as Judd's wife. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably... Mistake numero uno. Yeah. One time I interviewed. <laughs> one, one time I interviewed uh, Larry David's uh, wife, Lori. Mm-hmm. Lori David, when they were still married, and I referred to her as Cheryl. I was interviewing her on Air America. What happened? It was no good. <laughs> it's, it was it was not a good radio moment for no. the right reason. What? For the wrong reason, it was a great radio moment. Did she start to yell at you, or did was it just well, the, the vibe? The, the tone, vibe changed. The, the tone definitely changed. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find yourself apologizing, or did you just like think I'm just going to go through I, it? No, I I can't shut up. I'm like I can't believe I did that. I, <laughs> it's really bad. Please forgive me publicly. Yeah. Did and she did she say so, it's okay? She she, was, she said that's never happened before. <laughs> really? With that tone, I believe. How could that that had to have happened all the time? 
No, I mean, well, she's uh, important in her own head about I, things. I guess so. <laughs> you know, she's, <laughs> she, she, everybody doesn't you know, want to be in the shadow of, you know what I mean? Yeah. They have their own thing. You don't want to be like, what's that guy's uh, chick's name? The one who's, uh, does all the great stuff? Yeah. No, that's the nightmare. Yeah. 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 I've been there. But let's, let's not talk about me. I'm happier here. <laughs> so. Nick's, You've been there? You've been in the shadow of your girlfriend? No, they've, they've been in the shadow of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's not a tremendous shadow. Not publicly. I hear at home it's a pretty large shadow. <laughs> you have a very small wife. <laughs> but yeah, my public who fits, who fits in your shadow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My public shadow, not huge. Not right, right. A little bigger now. Right. But back in the day, no, it was just it was a personal shadow. Do you get you must get recognized now walking around. I get recognized in weird ways for different things. Okay. Uh some people recognize me for the comedy, some people now recognize me for the IFC show, but the the greatest recognition was one time I was on the phone at Phoenix Airport, mm -hmm. sitting in a chair, and there was a guy sitting facing the other way behind me, and I'm just talking, and he goes, "I, you're Mark Marin, because I just recognize your voice." That's so awesome. That's wild. Yeah, that that was crazy. Or I get this thing where people have their earphones on, they look at me and go, "Listening to you right now, <laughs> <laughs> right now," and I'm it's like, on. "Which episode?" Yeah. yeah. Does there a certain? Is it all dudes? No. Um, so it's not, is there a certain type that recognizes you or is it, it's all different kinds? Troubled people. Troubled people? <laughs> no. No, it's all different people. I'm always very surprised by it. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of dudes, but they're like, I don't know. I, I, I like to think there are women that enjoy the show mm -hmm. that I don't annoy. Yeah. I think there are. There's some out there. There's some women that see you. Okay. So, Nick, you're a big director. You're big time. I'm, I, people trust you with millions of dollars. They, they do. They do. How much did this, uh, did neighbors cost? It cost 18. That's not a lot. No, it was cheap. Give them to the Greek. That was cost some money, right? That was exp That was my most expensive. That cost, I think, forty five. Uh huh. So yeah. And where did it? Where? Okay, let's go back. Okay. Because you're you're a smart guy. You seem to have your shit together. I'm glad it's, I seem that way. <laughs> where? <Where'd laughs> because I'm wearing a collared shirt. But where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Miami. In Miami, Florida. I grew up in Miami, Florida. And that's yeah. where you live your whole life. Well, I was born. Okay, I was born in London. Why? My parents just lived there for ten years. They're not British. Not British. Your they dad just, had some big idea. They just moved there. They wanted to move. They moved they there wanted, in 1970, and they let they left in 19. They wanted out. But yeah, they, they just were, they were just going there for an adventure. You never said why. Did you go to London? No, I said why. I think I said why. And and they said they just wanted a little adventure, so they moved there. Are they still together? They're still together. Yeah. Oh, so you're one of those people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. All right. So that's where <laughs> this is starting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not in front of the camera. <laughs> the people, the, those people are in front of the camera. The, the needy, insecure ones are yeah. in front of the camera. I have my own shit I'm dealing with, but it's all behind the camera. I'm making note of that. He yep. has his own shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's dealing with. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah. Star. Okay. Before I came here, by the way, my wife said I, I have to listen to this podcast because then I'll get to know my husband. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> because it's because it's like there's a therapeutic angle. Are to you your in, Are you in therapy? I just started going. Oh, so you're yeah. okay, something's I just going on. Them. Yeah. yeah how, how many times have you gone? I've gone, I think, about eight times, nine times. Oh, so you should know by now whether, you know, you're jerking that guy around. I don't think we... What do you mean by jerking him around? Like, are you just kind of rambling on and entertaining him? Or are you like, I've got... Th these are the issues I'd like to deal with. Oh, no, I had issues that I wanted to deal with. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, so... So yeah, That's okay. A, it was a specific reason. It wasn't just like I want to entertain Ooh, a guy. I'm gonna make another post. It. <laughs> oh no, this is <laughs> reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh god. So no, we don't. You know, look, I'm not. I'm. I don't pry. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so, so you you go. You grew up in in Miami, I grew Florida. Up in Miami. Yeah. Are you Jewish? I'm Jewish. Really? I know. No one thinks I'm, I'm Jewish. No, I I figured Stoller. Stoller, Stoller, Lieber and Stoller, they wrote yeah, all Lieber, the songs. Yeah, that's true. Lieber and Stoller. Uh, Fred Stoller. He's Jewish. Yeah, he's very Jewish. Yeah. In a way. But, you know, but just behaviorally. Behaviorally Jewish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so what's your dad do in Miami? Why you in Miami? Why'd you end up there? Because usually younger Jews don't necessarily go raise their kids in Miami. But that might be uh, judgmental on my part, and I'm not sure that's true. No, I think there's a, uh, my dad grew up in Miami. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he wanted to go back home. So really? So your parents, grandparents were there? My grand, all, all four. We're, we're there. You grew up with all four grandparents? Yeah. All and parents them. that stayed married? Yes. This is, I think we're done talking. Okay. <laughs> this, was a, this was a delight. <laughs> What'd your dad do down there? He's a, he's a, he was and is a stockbroker. Now they live in New York. All grandparents gone. They yeah. live in New York. They, they, My parents live they in New York. Sort of, they they did of, the reverse. The reverse uh, so they trip. got old and went to New York. Yeah. 
And my mom did not like Miami. Oh, so that was why? A, that was a why she just didn't she didn't click with she didn't really find any friends there. She's from New York. I think she always wanted to like Manhattan. Manhattan, yeah. She's oh. Upper West Side. Oh, yeah. So she wanted to go back and See, she uh, probably hated every second of it. Why are we she here hated now? It. Yeah. yeah, she hated it. So that was in the house. That was in the house. Yeah, yeah. Just waking up to your mother going, "Why?" Yeah, it was a lot of that shit. Yeah. So it, it wasn't like yeah, <laughs> like just miserable <laughs> drinking during the day. See, my dad has a Google alert with my name on it, mm-hmm. so like I don't know how much. To talk about this, you can talk about all you want. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, talk about the horrible fighting that went on in your home <laughs> when you were a child. Talk about how it scarred you, and that you. No, it resulted in uh, me really enjoying comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and you got siblings? Yeah, I have a brother. Yeah, how did he turn out? He turned out. He works for. Uh, he works. He works in politics. Really? Yeah, he works for Alan Grayson. Uh huh. He's a very liberal. Yeah, uh, politician. Familiar with that guy. Uh, and he started out as a blogger, my brother. He was like the first person who said the word blog to me. Oh, I thought started... you were going to say to anyone. Maybe that... to anyone. <laughs> I literally, he was talking about how blogs were going to take over everything. And <laughs> he, and, my... he and Al Gore yeah. and invented the, the internet and the word blog. Yes, he did. <laughs> exactly. And I just uh, and I just made fun of Al Gore for uh, for something the right wing makes fun of him for, and I feel ashamed of it. Yeah, and it's not true. It's not true. He didn't even claim that he invented it. No, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. They just hung that on him to make him look foolish. Yeah. <laughs> And it and he, worked. It did work. Because he's kind of stiff. Yeah, he's a little stiff and did not defend himself properly. Right. You got to fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Always fight. Yeah. <laughs> so you grow up in Miami. Like, were you a, a troubled kid? No, I was goody two shoes. Really? Yeah, I was. I Always I was looking on... for approval? Yeah, I Raising think so. your hand a lot in school? Yeah, uh, I was that kind of guy. Straight A's? Yeah, I got good grades. Oof. Yeah. Sports? No sports. Oh, okay. terrible sports. All right, we can keep moving forward. Yeah, okay. Uh, and you're that was close. It was. I, I felt like touch and go. Yeah. So your brother. Did you get good grades? No. It's terrible grades or mediocre grades? At one point, it was pretty bad. Okay. And then I freaked out my senior year, and I had to apply myself. I was the unmotivated kid. Like he's very bright, but we don't know how to get him. And then senior year, you got really good grades. Well, I got panicky because I I I, did, I wasn't going to go to college. Okay. I decided I was just going to ruin my life completely. Okay. And then like uh, my senior year, I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do here? And it was, you know, and then I got like... Wait, where'd uh, you grow up again? Albuquerque. Albuquerque. All right. Okay. Family's from Jersey, though. Oh, okay. So I nailed it <clears throat> senior year, but it was not quite enough to get me into a decent school. Mm-hmm. So I ended up in a, you know, a slightly smaller sort of sympathetic college, I'll call it. it okay. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Sympathetic. Big hearted for yeah. people who had the money to put their troubled kids in right. school. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so you kick ass in school. Was there was there any comedy in your life at that time? Well yeah. I mean my my grandfather, my dad's dad, always made lots of jokes mm. and my dad was obsessed with comedy and I was obsessed I became obsessed, obsessed how? He just loved he loves comedy. He who, loves Saturday Night Live. Who, he loves uh Who were his guys though? The people he loved? Mm-hmm. I mean, it really was like the early Saturday Night Live stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, and like Chevy Chase, like all of the, those, like you know, those movies. Um, I mean, as a kid, I would watch a lot of the, you know, uh, the Zucker Abrams Zucker stuff, like Top Secret. And... It's weird because I didn't like that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I, I I could identify it as being funny to people, but for me, not so much. Like I, uh, I don't, I don't really like. I mean, like you didn't like Naked Gun. No, I like it, but it, it's um what you're more impressed with the con the, the amount of jokes. Yeah, like the the it just the tone of it is so the pace of it is amazing. Yeah, and it's really just this weird big joke delivery system. Yeah, and some of them are pretty amazing. Yeah, it's like I enjoyed Airplane. You know, like if that's the one I think back on. Naked Gun. Yeah, I I enjoy it because Leslie Nelson was funny. But it's you know I like um deeper well, comedy. A, well, I was a kid experiencing those things so well, i'm just like, it was, i'm just it was saying mind-blowing I'm, to me. well i'm just saying you're shallow and as a child you were shallow those are the yeah no i'm a shallow person that's the height of con- that's actually all i've ever seen in the comedy genre <laughs> are naked gun <laughs> naked gun two and a half naked gun 33 and a third and that's and, based, that's it it seemed to be enough i saw part of top secret but it got too deep <laughs> No, of course it's fun as a kid. Those, yeah. those movies, and I, be- you know, you and I became. It also was like at the time it was like what was on our VHS shelf. Yeah. So it was also for whatever reason we had Top Secret, so I watched it eight thousand times. Mel Brooks, that was another like Blazing yeah. Saddles and History of the World. Mm-hmm. I watched a zillion times. Blazing Saddles still funny. Well, that's really the model for it, isn't it? I guess yeah. maybe Marx Brothers, but I mean, but Mel Brooks is really the like those guys, the Zucker guys, are the next yeah. phase two of that in a way. And early Woody Allen, Bananas, and. uh and, uh, That's right. Right. Sleeper. I watched a million times. Sleeper's very funny, but yeah. I think that that had a little depth to it. I think there was some thinking involved. Bananas. 
also. When when did you get a, when did you start to uh to think that it might be your calling? Um well I beca- well then the other thing is that Dave Barry the humor columnist yeah. is out of Miami. Mm-hmm. So as a kid I read his books and started writing copying him basically. Just writing things about my like family or the yard or whatever. Essays. Essays. Like yeah. comic essays. Like I read sure. one of his books and I was right. like I can't believe you can do this in the written form. Right. Uh, and I'd already been obsessed with Saturday Night Live and all that other stuff. Uh-huh. And so I started to write kind of essay, comic essays as like a seventh grader uh-huh. <laughs> that just for myself that were just complete ripoffs of Dave Barry. You didn't read them in, in front of the class or nope. anything? No, I read them. I wrote them for like my my dad kind of, my dad appreciated them. He so did? I wrote, I wrote them for him. Oh, yeah. that's sweet. Yeah. So that was, that was my like earliest writing that did I did. Did you ever do anything writing. weird? Like, you know, did your father ever say like, you should contact Dave? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I wrote, I, I wrote him a letter because he what, was like a local celebrity before he became a national. What is it with Jewish treasurer. parents? You know, Dave Barry might enjoy seeing this. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh no, I don't think I sent him anything. Yeah. I, you know what I did is I wrote him a letter asking him if he needed an unpaid intern. Uh huh. And he, he didn't. He wrote me a very nice note back and said thank you, but I, don't, I actually don't need anyone. Was it, was the note hilarious? I think he, I'm sure he made some joke. Yeah. In it, but I don't. Not I don't memorable remember. though. Not that. No. That's disappointing. A little yeah. Bit, especially as a guy that likes him. You're yeah. Right. Maybe, it was mainly just nice. Oh. It was a nice note. Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't want to crush a seventh grader's yeah. spirit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how to say I can't hire, legally yeah. hire a seventh grader. Yeah. That's like against the law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But it was, it was your dad's idea though, right? Had to be. Uh, Maybe I think, he needs some know. help around the house. I don't know. I, I'm not. I can't. Why am I giving your dad that voice? Yeah. I, he, hey, Nikki. <laughs> Why don't you ask Dave Barry? Wait, where's my, is my dad in the room? Where is he? <laughs> dad? Surpri- my, this is your life. Oh my God, uh, dad. <laughs> how are you, kiddo? <laughs> you should do a show in Vegas where you just imitate people's fictional family. parents. Yeah, or fictional just make parents. it up. Yeah. Like, like a Kreskin show. Like, come, come up here and tell me your father's name and religion and I'll try to. It's like a mix of magic it. and impressions. <laughs> <laughs> That's always wrong. <laughs> right. and, the, and the voices don't vary much. Yeah. They're like the Jewish guy's like, hello. <laughs> As is, as is the Christian one. Right. And the non-Jew is like, hello. <laughs> and the British one's like, hello. 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 Lovey. <laughs> How you doing, governor? <laughs> what would be the Jewish British one? Uh, ooh, that's challenging. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, oi, hello. We tried. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but I'm going to leave it in. Okay. Because it, like, it was challenging and neither one of us could do it. I no. wish someone could, we had someone here who was like teaching us how to do these things. Like what you need to do to do a British Jew. We need Del Close to Del come in. <laughs> to, come to, in. To, let's do a, a, a Herald yeah. that starts <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with all you have is British Jew and, and, and. On an airplane. Yeah. On an airplane. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. In Shakespearean? I don't know. I'm trying to think of other things, oh, other improv good. things. Yeah, Shakespearean be Jew. Shakespearean, there sure yeah. is one, right? I'm sure. Shylock. Shylock. Right. <laughs> right. All right, getting back to Miami and your sad attempt to work for Dave Barry. Yes. <laughs> uh, I also, a child. at the time... I'm being very, uh, I'm being very uh, edgy with you, and I apologize. No, I like it. Well, I, I no think, holds barred. That's your tagline. Well, I, I don't. I don't know why certain <laughs> things come out of my personality for certain people, but this is what you're getting. I like it. Okay, uh, I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, but at the at the time too, when I would watch Night Live, you know, yeah. I watched it, and uh, I didn't want to. I was obsessed with becoming a writer for it. You were as a even as a kid. I had no interest in the in you performing. Know, in performing. I, I think I, I had that. I think I had that too. I didn't know how one did it, but I, I do remember writing some sketch ideas. Yeah, I wrote sketches when and stuff. I was very young. Yeah, like I ten. Was, I think I, I was like, again, it all started around seventh and eighth grade that I got really, to start to try to do it. Who did I talk to? I think Judd actually transcribed, um, SNL sketches to, to, to take them apart to figure out how they were written. That's why he's so, he's so powerful. <laughs> I, think I didn't him. do that. I just watched them. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it was and somebody who, yeah. And, I'm sure it was him. And so did you get involved with any of that in high school with the comedy writing other than the, uh, the columns you wrote for your father? Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> columns for my father. Columns for my father sounds like that's a, your next movie. Th- that's a good. That's the name of my autobiography. Well, no, that's going to be that's going to be your serious movie. Where yeah. you're like, I'm going to try it. It's close to my heart. Columns for my father. It stars Collins Robert from- Redford. Yeah, um, and it's co-written. You and Dave Barry write it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Did oh, you, high school. You didn't do any. I went to a boarding school. I went to an Episcopal boarding school, and I started. Uh, satire magazine in the in the which, Episcopal which boarding Episcopal school. boarding school St. Paul's school so it's not Exeter 
It's not Exeter. But it's, it's near like Exeter. It's like Exeter. It's but the smaller. competitive one. I think it's I'm more. Talking. It's more WASPy than Exeter. So you're one of those, you know, you're one of those like, uh, you know, those, uh, in good, denial of my Jewish heritage. No, you're, you're, uh, a good student. Mm-hmm. Your parents are like, we want to give him the best education. Yeah. This will set him up for Harvard. For, exactly. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. So you, <laughs> I'm not even going to deny it. Yeah. I mean, well, that's what was happening. So that's the only reason that that's how the aristocracy works is right. that, you know, Jews have to wedge themselves into weird religious institutions. To yeah. get <laughs> I mean, I've been to more church than synagogue by like a lot by like and when i hear episcopal hymns i feel at home yeah. as does my brother who went to st paul we both feel more at home when you hear like you know all things bright and beautiful or whatever i really? feel like a home yeah i feel at home so they pounded that india oh yeah you you went to temple or sorry not temple you went to church four times a week you had to yeah get the fuck out of here i mean they would claim it was like a non-denominational thing but like you were singing hymns and shit so you're Jesus. at st paul's yeah which is you know modern i'm sure there's a lot of drug addicts and rich kids oh there. yeah it's the mainly that <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> of course it is i didn't fit in you know i didn't you know i didn't really fit i had a great junior high experience and then i didn't really fit into in high florida school. in florida yeah like, well, i had a lot of friends i know it's all jews public junior high no no, right. of course not. Come no, on. No, all right, all right. My okay. dad's a stockbroker. What do you think? Well, I thought maybe you had a little bit of the towny experience in school, where you 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 mixed with the locals and you no. got yourself into a little trouble. You wrecked a muscle car because uh, Jesse, your non-Jewish friend, was drunk. <laughs> Jesse and Zach. No, yeah. there was no. Uh, no, we didn't okay. mix with townies. But there were very few Jews at St. Paul's. It was actually the only experience, time in my life I wasn't around mainly Jews. You weren't, weren't surrounded by the cultural familiarity? Of Judaism. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't even understand that that was part of what was making me feel out of sorts. But it really was. Yeah. You know. Well, th- well there's a shorthand you yeah. know, with uh, with a bunch of rich Jewish kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're, both, you're all living pretty much the exact same life, mm-hmm. uh, give or take. Uh, a, a a parent who might have been make jokes who make... might have been in prison for tax problems, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can make jokes and people get your other Jews get them, or sure. at least get that you're trying to make a joke. Sure, yeah, and and, and if, you, you... if it doesn't work, they make fun of you, and then you make fun, you know. But at a wasp school, it's not like that, right? You, you make a joke and you just get sour faces. Everyone goes, "Who let the Jew in?" <laughs> no, that's make... a great. That's another great impression. You're killing it. <laughs> I was like looking around for like my waspy friend. <laughs> yeah. It's, they don't even know. There's no, it's not, it's not like school ties. It's not yeah. anti-Semitic. You're right. just not, you just don't, I just didn't fit it's in. Culturally different. It's just culturally totally different. Were there any, uh, people that you, you kept in touch with? Like, were there any, uh, celebrities or, or, or scions of, of wealthy families? I always like, when I talk to people who've gone to those prep schools, it's like, was there a Kennedy there? Was there a, there was a Rockefeller. Oh, Rockefeller. There was a Rockefeller. I, I didn't stand, no, I wasn't friends with anyone there that was like no, that. You weren't friends with the Rockefeller kid? I was not friends was with he a, Was he a troublemaker? She, uh, she, she was okay. a, she was a, uh, kind of, okay. kind of, they're, they're all troubled, you know, when you have that much, like, <laughs> yeah, when you don't have to do anything, when you ever. have to do anything, you're troubled. Yeah. They're, uh, so, so yeah, so it was, you know, but, but, uh, your but only yeah. responsibility in life is to sort of spend some of the family money wisely yeah. and try not to destroy yourself with the other family money. Exactly. <laughs> and you do the whole thing underneath an imposing oil portrait of your grandfather with no lips with no lips yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like that that is i your, feel like your yeah. lizard looking grandfather yeah that whole experience made me really happy i wasn't yeah. born into that <laughs> yeah well so, what's the one thing you can bank on you know as a as a as a jew of our generation it's like you know just two generations back there's a, there's a boat involved in some shitty work exactly right. <laughs> yeah yeah my great-grandfather was literally a button salesman I love yeah. it buttons. Yeah. yeah he's literally a but he pushed a cart around and sold buttons that is great yeah you know on the so, lower east side i think so yeah, yeah why not yeah who so needs buttons yeah he's the button man <laughs> speaking yiddish i love that about jews my great-grandfather did uh, just made the ends of shoelaces <laughs> what <laughs> there's a guy that made those yep you, people needed them then <laughs> then there's the the great grandparents who are sort of like he did a lot of things yeah first there was the food cart <laughs> then he had the dry cleaning place he made sauerkraut yeah he made for, sa- for three years we just lived off sauerkraut he's made sauerkraut they'd, they'd, they'd still do now that's a popular profession i just talked yeah. to some i talked to uh i went to my bro- my brother's kids bat mitzvah Niche pickling. That's right. Yeah. It happens. Like, I talked to a guy that they, him and his uh, fiance is a cousin on my, my brother's wife's side who they make their own tempeh. 
And I think oh, they're wow. up in uh, Northern California. They make tempeh fresh. Okay. And 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 I'm like, well, do you do other stuff like um like pickles at all? And they're like, we've tried to do that. And I'm like, well, like a sauerkraut. And they're like, no, there's like two or three people in our area. <laughs> <laughs> That's already making sauerkraut. You know what I think when I eat tempeh? Mm. I wish this was homemade. But it's the weirdest thing. You figure no, someone, I don't actually think that. I know, but, <laughs> but someone's got to make it. And, I, yeah. and then you sort of wonder like, wow, what is it? What would that taste like? Because I don't mind tempeh, but you always, all you ha- I have to choose from is that weird brick of it. One, there was this Japanese restaurant that was briefly open in LA that made fresh tofu at your table. And it tasted exactly like normal I tofu. Th- I thought tofu took some time to sort of ferment You can make the soft... It's the softest tofu, like I guess you could make it quickly. Quickly, yeah, and it didn't taste much different than normal tofu. So that, uh, so that, that was just a spectacle, an unnecessary spectacle. Yeah, exactly. I, it was so a, what your friend is doing is a, a waste. Is a waste a, of time. I'm well, really you know, sorry to lay that out there. Well, they're only distributing it locally to a few restaurants. Are hoping <laughs> to go big with it. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'll invest in that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. get into the tempeh racket. Sounds good. <laughs> it's the future. <laughs> it is. I'm not even sure what it is. No, it's fermented something. Soy, I think. Oh, okay. Back to you. Okay. Back to the button salesman. Back to St. Paul's. Here so, we are. Yes. You're you're surrounded by by aliens, mm-hmm. uh, and you you start a satire rag. Yes. Start it, a had, satire. It, it had not been part of the you, you created it i created it does it still exist now no oh so it didn't it went away, it went away after i I graduated and then it was on it was around for a few years it didn't it, catch well you know no actually what happened is is what happens with all things that are like that which is they started to make vicious fun of specific students and so they shut it they down. they get in trouble yeah they get in trouble well what was the angle the angle of the satire magazine mm-hmm. what was it called it was called spallet spallet there was an anagram of saint paul's Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. It's okay. Hilarious. And uh, <laughs> nothing better than talking about the comedy you thought of in high school. <laughs> and what was the cutting edge satire that you were doing at it that was, time? You were just making fun of different the different tropes of boarding school. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. It was. It wasn't. You know. How many pages we talking? Uh, what you know, it'd be about maybe twenty pages. Oh yeah. Fifteen pages. Did you have a staff of writers. Oh, yeah, we got a staff. So people you put together. Excited. It was gotta... all the nerds. It was all the nerds. There were a few Jews. Yeah. And nerdy people. Yeah. And we all got comedy together. nerds. Comedy nerds, yeah. So, so you had to get you had to get a charter and stuff. Did you have to? Or we got approval from the, you know. Do you had to do some paperwork? We had to do a little paperwork. We got a we got a tiny like amount of money to do it. And, and you were the editor. I was the editor. So this and is founder, where, founder and editor, founder and editor of, of S- 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 Spallets, and it was really fun. Spallets, Spallets, yeah. But this was a practical experience for you. That uh, that it was made you learn uh, deliberation of of assignments. Yeah, uh, editing. I, yeah, uh, what's funny, what isn't funny. Uh, that how to let down people gently. Oh, how? Why did that was do something? That? Well, you know what happened is there was a period of time where I was, uh, uh, I started. I they were putting together an issue, right? We were all putting together an issue, and I suddenly, I suddenly found that I had a girlfriend, so I wasn't around for that. Yeah, and uh, I came back to look at the issue, and I didn't think it was good. Right, and I said to everyone, "This is not good." That's how you said it. That's how I said it, and I said, "This isn't good," and this is true. This is a thing that I learned from did this you, experience. Did you ever say this? Who fucking wrote this? Well, Which one of you assholes? <laughs> Any of that? I should have. No, I just said this is this is not good. This isn't good. It's not up to par. And then some of them started crying. And then I realized, Stop oh, it. I'm not kidding. And then I and and then I probably was slightly meaner than this is not good. But it was around. Uh, yeah, I think now I'm I'm starting to question your whole story. This no, is, this is not good. Made someone cry. That kid had trouble anyway. I was. Well, they've been working on it constantly for like a while. It takes you know, especially at that time, it takes a while to pull this stuff together. <laughs> Did, with Photoshop. Did, did one kid just or start like, like the layout program? Try, he was trying like, to hold in his tears, and then he... at first there was silence, and I was kind of like tearing it apart. And then, uh, and so, then, okay, well, but I literally it... learned. I literally learned from that. And you take that into all the to when you're trying to critis- criticize someone, whoever it is, yeah. you have to do it in a way where they feel really good about the criticism you're giving them. Right. I think to make to then make that everyone so, excited. So this is not good. Is not tearing it apart. So there was some tearing going on that you're Yeah, not well then I gave specific examples of what was bad about but it. But was there ever this sort of like you, you thought this was funny? Yeah, did, I did, probably said that. I said, I think I said this is not good. This isn't funny. What's funny about this? Yeah. This isn't good. Yeah, and I did, but none of this sort of like you're you're not right for humor. No, I didn't I didn't I, there was we didn't have an access to enough people to kick people off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> But did uh, any? In of fact, those... my senior year, I remember two hot girls joined, probably just to put it on their resume, that on they their college for, resume uh, for, sp- 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 for spouts. But they were—they only came to the photo for the yearbook. But we were all really excited. 
<laughs> that's so, we couldn't believe it. That's so sad. They're here. You They're guys. here. Guys, we got two. So it's just a picture of a bunch of nerds it's looking literally at two a girls. a bunch of nerds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it really is. I never saw them again, uh-huh. but I didn't care. I was like, whatever. Did any of those guys uh, go on to be writers? Any of the guys that you knew in high school, you still friends with any of them? I'm, yeah, no, I'm friends with, I'm friends with them. No, none of them went on to, to No show this. business? No show business from that. Yeah. All right, so, so after Spowitz, the tremendous success. And I did a radio show in, in boarding school. Too. Really? Yeah. Briefly. What was that? That was, I, I did it, um, I would rip off Saturday Night Live skits and put, skits and put them on. You'd steal them. I'd do like the version, I'd replace the like character, you know, I remember the one, the, what was it, the, there was I can't remember the skit now, but there was an SNL skit that we kind of ripped off, uh-huh. uh, you know. And so changed. appropriating not a problem for you early on. Early on, no, definitely not a problem. <laughs> As I'm learning, it's guess, I guess it's the equivalent of like you know trying to like figure out how those things work, right? You know, yeah, okay, we'll, yeah. we'll let you off. I right. know, yeah, you it was high learn. school. It stopped. It stopped after. That. I don't know if there's a YouTube out out there of it. <laughs> you could be. In there trouble. definitely isn't. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm right now. There's someone looking. They're, I'm going to hang this Nick Stoller guy up. Yeah. This guy's going down. Well, the good thing, though, about being at an Episcopal school is no one else was into comedy, so they didn't know I was ripping it off. <laughs> <laughs> but I do th- I do think that, that that is like a learning process. And, yeah. you know, it's some version of, of whether it was Judd or whoever it was that I talked to who was writing those scripts down for just to look at them. Yeah. Or just to feel where the beats are. It's important. Yeah, it's like, it's. I mean, it's the equivalent of, like, I don't know, I feel like you're in high school and, like, you know... The president of your high school does like a top ten list. Yeah, like they're ripping off Letterman, but also who cares? It's high school. You know, yeah, it's I like, get it. You know, so it's like that. All right, so you you got the grades to get into Harvard, obviously. Yes. Who do I know from your group in Harvard? Um. Well, you know, Mike Schur. He does a. He created uh, Parks and Rec in Brooklyn Nine Nine. A lot of TV. Oh yeah, guys. I met that guy. I just yeah. I just did a panel with him. Yeah. He did, did a else? lot of. Um, How old are you? I'm 38. Oh boy, yeah, so, yeah. tough life you're living. I know it's hard. Yeah, you have, hard. Uh, maybe something will happen for you eventually. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Got my fingers crossed. Who else was there? Um, I'm trying to think who was oh, B.J. Novak. Um, who else? What was he like then? Uh, I knew Did him a little. Did he make an impression on you? Yeah, he was very sure of himself. I didn't know him that well, but he was. He was. Uh, yeah, that goes guy. a long way, my friend. Yeah. But he Being was sure of yourself. And I knew he did stand up, which blew my mind. Like, I couldn't believe people were doing stand up. I just saw him in uh, Nashville. Oh, okay. He read from his book. Oh, cool. And he was very confident. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need that if you're going to be in front of the camera. But the, what, is, what is this Harvard thing? What, do you, what is it? All right. So you're, you're. It's a real conspiracy. The Lampoon. It's all the, the Harvard Lampoon. It's a real conspiracy. All the comedy. There's, it's a, you know, there are a lot of. It's not a conspiracy. Comedy. It's a brotherhood. Brotherhood, yeah. But, um, but still, like, you know, I've talked to Conan. Mm-hmm. Uh, about specifically about Harvard. I feel like I've talked to a couple of other Harvard people. Have you been to the Lampoon? I've walked by it many times. I went to school in Boston. Okay. So I would go over to Harvard. Yeah. And I would, you know, hang out and be like, I don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I'd go this right. Dumb. I'd go right onto the quad <laughs> and go like, do you guys think you're better than me? Right. <laughs> and they'd, they'd remove me. Yeah. No, and no, I, and I, no one would respond. No. It was even like, worse. That guy's here again. <laughs> <laughs> Can, sir, do you need any help finding the tube? The, the no, tube I know where I am. <laughs> sir, are you okay? Would you I like? Just, I'm just going to the Tasty. <laughs> Would you care for some hot soup? <laughs> yeah. Did you go to the Tasty? Yeah, yeah. I love it's the gone tasty. now. I know it's all gone. Everything's Everything, gone. It's all Doesn't, banks. They're yeah. all different banks. They're going to tear Harvard down. I heard. And just replace it with a bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not a no. bank in a studio? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, you can a, shoot. You can now tra- shoot, shoot and, at Harvard and a training center for third world dictators. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, but like, I'm sort of mystified by it. But obviously, you know, you're you're well, just a guy. You had your your mind and and you. But I, I was also obsessed with the Lampoon. Like, I was obsessed with it before because I was obsessed with comedy writing. I knew about like Doug Kenny and like those people who the wrote, original Lampoon, the original Lampoon. And I was and then I became obsessed with the current Lampoon and knew that it had some entree into TV writing, which is what I wanted to do. So. I would read the Lampoons, and in high school, and I really wanted to be on the Lampoon. But you read you read the old stuff, and you like you know you were a fan of Animal House, perhaps. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. And but you read some of the the archival Lampoons. Yeah, PG I read O'Rourke, Tony I read, Hendra, Kenny. Yeah, once I was I knew about Doug Kenny probably from Animal House, and then I just knew about him, and then I read a lot of those arc. There's all of the archival th- stuff. Is, yeah. In the library at the Lampoon, so I read those once I was on the Lampoon. I read all of them. They, well, and they they're pro- so funny. 
what the actual national lampoon? The actual national lampoon. And then the actual lampoon going back to what the 1800s or whatever. That's not as funny. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, as good. Didn't get the references. No. <laughs> we, there's also the entire, the collected works of Punch, uh -huh. that, that British yeah. comedy. That, that also is not funny. Yeah. I've tried to read it to under, to be like, you know, it's, it's interesting. Did you glean not. anything from it? No. Just that everything is, ends. But what is the education? <laughs> yeah. What is the education? That life is short. Your life is short. <laughs> short. You know? So, yeah. so make some money. Make some money now yeah. because it, in a split second, yeah, yeah, no one will yeah. care. Make sure you make friends here. <laughs> right. Be, <laughs> be nice because you, then you get more flops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is there some, the curriculum, the curriculum, what did you study? English. All right. So how does it work? But you, you're brought Once I got to Harvard, I was like, I'm basically done studying. I just want to get on Lampoon and have a good time. But you, how did you do? What was your great GPA? Uh, it was like, once, the thing about Harvard is once you get in, yeah. it's very easy to get like a B or B plus. Yeah. It's basically impossible to get like an A. Yeah. So like, I was just like, I'm fine with a B or B plus. But you were able to do work, you had discipline, you did yeah. what you had to do and you, Boarding you, school teaches you some of that too. Right. Because you don't, you're just, you know, learn how to deal with your time. But you know? the, the track you were on was not the bad one. No. Yeah. There was just no way that was going to happen. No. So you go to Harvard, but is there some magic is there something like outside of the weird fraternal brotherhood of the Lampoon and Harvard in general that's designed <laughs> to sort of control and maintain seen... the power in all industries? Yeah. Is there is there some other secret education? No, there's happens? no. There's literally. Ma you've seen Harry Potter. There's literally magic. There is right. <laughs> no, there's you get yeah. <laughs> like you go to the Lampoon and a magic clown. You meet a magic. Clown. You meet a magic clown. <laughs> yeah. And a beam of magic light comes out of his crotch. <laughs> yeah, of course it does. <laughs> right out of his crotch. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, no, you, I learned, you know, at, in college, I learned uh, a lot about comedy from the Lampoon, and also I did improv comedy. And both but, of those things helped me a but lot. What, what happens in the Lampoon? I mean, I know I well, talked to Conan about it, but I, I don't know if I'm clear on it. What do you do there? Well, it's, it's a, you're hanging out with a lot of people who are obsessed with comedy and comedy writing all right. the time, and you're basically constantly riffing right. all day, which is something that was new to me. For constantly. the magazine. For the magazine, and also you're just hanging out and riffing. Right. Which, at, which was, you know, a bit exhausting. Like sometimes, like there are some people who just spend their whole lives at the Lampoon. I was someone who spent half my life there and half my life doing other stuff. Right. And, you know, and what so. What was the other stuff? Improv. What and then mean? also just hanging out with my roommates and stuff. Yeah. What'd you know? they end up doing? Uh, one is a reporter. Yeah. One, one works in finance. Finance. Yeah. It's one vague. works in publishing. Yeah. Publishing. I know it's, it is vague. I, he yeah. explains to me every time what he does and I can never remember. <laughs> yeah. He lives in England. He does finance. Yeah. Uh, He's a finance guy. He's a finance guy. But they were your buddies. Yeah, they were my friends. And then you go over to Lampoon and then just get into the mix. Get into the mix and riff. The the comedic cockfight. Exactly. Who's going to get to the top of the bat? Who's going to be able to riff yeah. the longest and the best? Who's going to tag this fucker? <laughs> right. Yeah. But like that riffing is a good... It was like a comedy writer's room, which I didn't understand. So right. you, you learn to like riff, I guess. How was the... Uh, how was, who was the funniest guy there? At the time? Yeah. Oh, they're be a honest. bunch. Be honest. Be honest. Couple names. Couple names. Couple names. Mike Schur is very funny. Okay. Super funny guy. This guy, Charlie Grandy. What happened like, to that guy? He writes for Mindy. Oh, he does? Yeah, he's super funny. Matt Murray. Yeah. Super funny What's guy. What's he up to now? Uh, he, uh, he writes for Parks. Give me one guy that you don't know what happened to. No oh, one knows what happened to that guy. No, I don't know. There's, there are, I know what all of them. That's why it's unrealistic. <laughs> that's why it's not real life and that's why it's not fair. No, there's a guy, there's a guy that. that... Where's the guy that went off the rails? Oh, no, that guy lost his mind. <laughs> There was actually one guy I wasn't in touch with for a while, and I wondered what happened to him. And then we reconnected over uh, email because yeah. I, I was posting lots of. I'm into artisan baking. What? I'm into baking breads. Okay, that's how I relax. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It does matter. And this matter. guy contacted me. He contacted me and was like, "I'm into this too." Breads. Breads. I'm writing that down. <laughs> artisan bread. You use the You're word putting artisan. together a kind of a no, pattern. No, you use the word artisan right here in front of me. You're into artisan bread. I'm into said, artisan baking. You said that publicly. I'm proud of it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be knocked down for that. I just, you know, there's a, w a way to get into that a little more delicately. Like it like, was a bit shocking. It was shocking. Like you say, like why it's if weird. You, Here's if, how you do it next time, next interview. Mm -hmm. I have an interesting hobby. I, I enjoy baking breads, and then people are like, "Really? What kind of breads?" Well, I, I guess some people would call them artisan breads, but um, that's I, humble bragging. I don't humble brag. What's the? Where's the humble brag? I you, guess by, some people would call it artisan. Baking. What, what, what? <laughs> you just gotta you gotta own it. But you artisan, do it. when you say artisan breads, yeah, 
You, you've <laughs> elevated yourself. You're you're like uh, you're, you're Harvard in your hobbies. You're you're mm-hmm. uh, you don't you don't. I bake. I enjoy baking breads. I do a lot of different kinds of breads. No, you I'm artisan breads. Yeah, fine. They're artisan. Well, I, well, what, I can show you photos. What does it mean? What does artisan bread mean? <laughs> so you do a focaccia. What what makes it art? Do you make focaccia? No, I haven't done that. What do you make a rye bread? I've made a Gruyere a Gruyere loaf. Okay, well that sounds a little artisan. The point is that the, one of the guys. <laughs> no, the <laughs> point <laughs> is, have you done the classics? I've done white bread like a sourdough. Uh huh. I did. Not, I did a rye. You did. I did a rye. Out? It came out well. It was a little flat. A little dense. It was a little dense. What? That's a but problem. It was, it was good because it's hard to get it to to get the. It's nice, hard to get rye to rise. Right, and the nice crust, and then you. But it, it, it had a good crust, but it just it, didn't rise it, well. It's, Dense. It was dense. It 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 rose enough, like it was still good, but it it just was it was a little dense. But have you ever baked a bread because it relaxes you, and then when the final product comes out, you just angrily throw it away. You eat like a, a few p- chunks of it angrily, and then you're like, "Fuck this," and you throw it away. I've thrown away some breads. Yeah, but it's the process is relaxing. Yeah, but that might be the real art is the throwing away the breads angrily. That's like a that's a, what a koan. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what is that. Yes. Yeah, so, so okay, so you made a Greer <laughs> loaf, and and this is what defines your hobby. <laughs> I enjoy. I enjoy. Uh, I, I look. I like cooking too, and yeah. I, I do not know. Do why you I'm, bake? I have. Okay. Do you make bread? No, I don't make bread. You should try it. It's relaxing. I haven't baked, I haven't done a lot of cooking lately. I, I have a few cake recipes I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've made some cornbreads. Uh, I have made a rye that came out dense and, and it was not my thing. It, it takes a lot of patience to, to make bread and I'm afraid of bread. It's a lot of useless calories in bread. <laughs> I know a lot of people like bread. I don't know why I'm taking this tone with you, but you're an artisan baker on the side. You seem mad. I'm, I'm a little mad. <laughs> you're a little angry right now. <laughs> I guess I use the term I, I with my friends. I use the term I'm an artisan baker as ironically all the time, Fine. and I dropped it. I dropped it on you without that familiarity. That's right. You 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 bring forth such a familiarity okay. that I thought I could use it because I was like, oh, now we're old friends, and you'll understand I'm being kind of ironic. I, I, I see, but I it wasn't. I forgot that this is an interview yeah, and think, that you don't know me that well. I think you're backpedaling now. I, I think that when you said it to me, it was in earnest. It was okay. It was. <laughs> We're at kind of a standoff. A little bit. Yeah. But we can get bit. through it. Yeah. Tell me about your failures as an improv performer. Should I show you <laughs> should, should I show you the photos of the artisan bread? After. Okay. After. <laughs> okay. No, so you did improv and that what you, and did that see I have to assume that hanging out the lampoon and riffing with those guys and, and now I understand it. I don't know that I really understood it that yeah. that you really are And you just, also just drink and party and do college shit with right, them. Right, but so the that's idea like, that's is that's like a big part of but it. But the too. idea is writing comedy. Yeah, you're writing comedy and you're hanging out with people who are all obsessed with comedy. It's like, you know, yeah. I imagine when you're hanging out with comics, you're all joking around. It's like yeah. that. It's that kind of, everyone is intensely joking That's around. right. You're, you're with brilliant people saying brilliant things. Yeah. Or, and, yeah, and just joking. Yeah. Which I hadn't been around before. Br- right. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, but the improv thing, I assume that the combination of the two, working with other people, learning those chops, because you had to learn something about performing yeah. in order to direct. Yes, that was with improv and I did some acting too in college and both things... Help me understand more about acting. Okay. And, and with improv, too, you're yelling out, you know, you're thinking of stuff on the spot, and you're, what you realize in improv is there's nothing scary about that. Yeah. That, like, you know, a few things will fail, but who cares? And so, so when you I'm, learned how to transcend the fear of not getting a laugh. Yes. That's which, a big one. Which is big, yeah. So, like, because you sort of dismiss it, like, you know, you just didn't, and then you don't have to be afraid, but that, it's very, it's scary at first. Yeah. And it's, it's scary, and also you realize that there, you're, fellow performer will help you so if i go out and do a bad joke yeah my, my friend might do a good one and help me out and unless me out your friend it. like really Sucks. enjoys watching you fail yeah that's that's, that's how he gets to laugh right that's that's more a comic thing yeah he's like oh he's tanking that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you're because when you're tanking in improv you're bringing everyone down with you yeah. yeah yeah i would do that on purpose i think if i was in improv did you do guy. improv no there seems I'm to be a real divide because i was i I'm was doing terrified. it now I, yeah, I guess we're doing a little show. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it now. We're doing a bit of a show. Yes, and <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although you really know, you really knowed my artisan baker bit. I don't know. You if really I, knowed it. I don't know if I knowed it, but I did stop us. You, yeah. I don't. I, I wanted more clarification. That was that was the opposite of yeah. No, but that was a no, but. I don't think so. You I know, but well, I think that what we got to was you know. If I had an improv here guy here, they would got they would get into it. We would do a good like if, kind of skit about. But wait, artisan. if I didn't do what I did, we would not have gotten to the hilarious Gruyere loaf, which you don't you 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 again presented a serious. I should have brought it because if you if I brought the Gruyere loaf, you would you would. 
I, you would backpedal. I wouldn't be the one backpedaling. No, I'm sure it'd be great. You, it's delicious. I, I'm just being a dick because you went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I, oh did okay. I, now I understand what's happening. Yeah. Oh yeah, my you god. Okay? I, huge relief. Yeah. Of I course. Did. Yeah. I should have worn a Harvard sweatshirt. <laughs> you should have. It would have been. It would have. It would have just been. Just started off that way. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been fun. I think. Yeah, hasn't it? It's been great. Oh, okay. I love this. I just. I don't. I didn't get the feeling that you were really taking it. No, I was. Ha- I'm having a good time. It's my problem. No, it's not your problem that I, I failed. <laughs> um. <laughs> thank God something worked out. Yeah. But uh, all right. So. But so now, tell me how the, the conspiracy. Tell me how the. That's, I'm just happy something worked out for me at 48 years old. I'm glad that everything. Right. You know, I, I hope to God that your life keeps going as well as it does. It is weird, though. Like at my age, when I run into people who are still mad about Harvard for some reason. I beg your pardon. Like, like you'll run into someone, and you'll be like, oh, like they'll be like, where do you go to college? I'll be like Harvard, and they'll be like, oh, you went to Harvard. It's like we're now like all 40. Come on. Let's move on. Doesn't go away. It doesn't go why, away. Why would you think that would go away? Because I don't know. Everyone's found their own route. Have they? But some people haven't. <laughs> but a lot of people from Harvard haven't found their own. At this point, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Anyways, no, I no, know. I get it. I think you know that, I mean? like within the comedy community, there's this idea mm-hmm. that uh, that it gives you, I think, false entree. Yes. Into and it's a I huge don't... step. It's a huge leg up. Yeah, and it I, is. And and I think that pisses some people off as it should right because it's a so, huge leg up yeah but but do you find in, in your experience are there people that went to harvard that got that leg up that didn't deserve it there are people who maybe got their first job right. and maybe didn't deserve it but then you don't you know you can't that, last you if can't you suck la- yeah if you, if you suck you, you don't you don't right. go on so that, like that's that's but yeah it certainly helps people you know so how does that work exactly so when you graduated Mm-hmm. What 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 did you do? Did you come out here immediately? No, I went to New York. Okay, and I tr- I worked in advertising, and I tried to really yeah. I worked what in the fuck was that about? Well, I was trying to break into the shows there in New York. Right, which shows? Uh, uh, Letterman, Letterman, Saturday Night Live. So you're submitting packages, yeah, monologue ideas, uh, jokes, and sketches. Right, exactly. through SNL, threw it to SNL, David and Letterman. Letterman, yeah, and I think Conan. Did you have an agent immediately? No, I didn't have any. How did you send? You just mailed a package. Like through friends. Okay. Through friends that I might know, yeah. N- nothing happened. Nothing happened? No. So you're like, I'm going to be a copywriter? Well, I, w- I wanted a job. I wanted to have a job to know I could just have a normal job. Right. Because I didn't, I, I, you know, at that point was like, I don't know if this will happen. Right. So I want to have a job just to know I can have a job. Right. Um. So I tried to- And, and, to, I, and to see what that felt like. Yeah. And I, I was very like anxious about graduating from yeah. college. I didn't, I wanted to have something lined up. So I got an internship at a- Ad firm. The idea was you can take your comedy chops and apply it to, uh, hey, buy a drink. Exactly. Yeah. Look yeah. at these shoes. This is, yeah. yeah. You're, you should, you should do some copywriting. <laughs> hey, eat this food. <laughs> yeah. Eat this. <laughs> Check out my phone. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best, this is the best one, stupid. <laughs> hey, dummy, this is the best. You'll like this shirt. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Someone's going to rip that off. Advertising taught me something. Mm hmm. Uh, just to, because it forced me to write about stuff I didn't want to write about. Yeah. So it, you know, it forced me to get over writer's block or whatever that is. To and, see it as a job. Yeah, to see it as a job. And yeah. that, and that, and you know, and I think, you know, you can sit, you know, at the time, like I would look at like a Molson Canadian and I'd have to write like 20 ideas for it. And that's like, doesn't, it's not exactly inspiring. Right. So, but it, but it, you know, it was a good, it was a really good training ground just for treating it like a job. So when did that crap out on you? I quit and yeah. moved to LA. Okay. Because I was doing, I was doing pretty well in advertising, and I the first year in advertising, you don't get paid that much, right? And then if you're doing well, they start to pay you well, and I knew that if that happened, I would never quit. It'd be hard for you to leave. Yeah. So, so what? Who did you? Who did you call out here when you're like, I'm coming? Um, I called a friend of mine from Harvard. From Harvard. Yeah. yeah. And I crashed on his couch and started to apply to stuff out here. But okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, this cachet. Yes. So. When you come out here as a Harvard grad <laughs> who did some time. <laughs> so mad. I'm not mad. You're doing great. I'm not mad. I'm doing good. I'm trying to impress you. you and I'm are. the one that went to Harvard. You are. I'm trying to impress you. Yeah, but but it's okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. So you come out here. You, you swept on a couch. That sounds like it must have been hard for you. It was. I'd never done it before. I thought couches were just for sitting. <laughs> So you call up who? And it wasn't. I'd only sit, sat on silk couches. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it was it was some sort of linen. Ugh, awful. Disgusting. It's really hard for you. Disgusting. I'm sorry you had to go through that. It was horrible. Yeah, for how long? Like three, four days? Viewers can't see it, but I'm crying right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I knew Viewers, I'd get listeners, you. Listeners, listeners I, can't I knew I'd get you to cry. Yeah. That's what happens on the show. Yeah. Before, Everyone cries. You spent like a week on a couch, and then you were uh, employed. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was employed. <laughs> It was a hard week, though. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was tough. No, so you call your friend who went to Harvard, and you, yeah. you hang out with him. So what is, like, as, um, no, I'm, I'm not being condescending. Yeah. I'm trying not to. Yeah. You can condescend all you want. I've already done that. Yeah. Well, let's get real. You're right. So as, I want to understand this Harvard Brotherhood. So, right. So what... <laughs> Harvard brother. No, but you focus like you. So you yeah. start. You start wanting to get writer work. Yeah. So you reach out to who? So my friend Mike Schur, who I mentioned, and uh, what was he doing at that time? He was. He wrote for SNL. Oh, but he was in LA. He was in New York. So he he uh, he helped me. His office mate yeah. was this guy Mike McCullers, mm-hmm. who uh, co-wrote the Austin Powers movies. Okay. And he uh, Mike recommended Is he a Harvard him. guy. No. Oh, Mike McCullers is Yale. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> So, uh, want me to let that settle in, or is no, I'm it, good. Are, I'm are, good. You, are you okay? No, I'm fine. Are you? How mad are you? I'm not mad. You guys deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> you, Look, you, you focused. You did the in work. high school. We happened to just yeah. I know to I focus. Know. I know you have discipline. I get it. Right. I get it. So he. So and McCullers was doing a show, the Austin Powers animated series that mm-hmm. was going to be on HBO. Right. So I applied to that. Okay. Uh, and got a writing job on that. So that. So that's the way it worked. Yeah. Uh, your Harvard buddy from the Lampoon, mm-hmm. Michael Schur. Michael Schur. Says, hey, McCullers, they got this kid that I know from Harvard. It's a funny guy. Right. Funny, he just, he quit advertising because he was making too much money. <laughs> and he, I wasn't yet. Okay. He, he <laughs> almost made a lot of money and he decided that, <laughs> that he was the right. I'm going to get killed after this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to literally kill me. No. No, that's fine. And so you write on the animated show, and that yes. gets you started. That got me started. That got me my agent. Okay. So then uh, Austin Powers Animated Series goes for 10 weeks, and then the powers that be decide they don't want to do it, and so it gets shut down. But you made a few bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I got my agent. Right. Uh, and then I kind of have a year of doing nothing. Like my really agent, nothing? Really nothing. I mean, I'm writing. I'm trying to write right. spec scripts and stuff. For to what? To get on TV shows. I mean, at the time I was writing, I'm sure I was writing like a just shoot me spec script sure. or, you know, just whatever was on at the time. Working, doing the thing. Just trying to, yeah, yeah. you know. And then Judd was hiring for Undeclared. Right. Uh, and he just, he hired, he wanted people close to college age and he hired out of UTA completely. And I mean, and it's one of those really lucky things. If I hadn't been at UTA, I wouldn't have right. been hired. Right. You know, and he so didn't know you. He did not know But me. you submitted what? He has to submit story ideas. Uh-huh. So I submitted a bunch of, and I love Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. And I submitted stuff. And, and you know, at, his style of comedy was what I grew to love, you know? Right. I, mean, I, talk, I started with that, you know, broader stuff, but sure. then got really into, like, James Brooks and right. later Woody Allen and, you know, um, Nora Ephron, all that stuff. You uh-huh. know? So that kind of... Deeper that kind stuff. Of deeper stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I was, with Freaks and Geeks, I, you know, I was like, oh my God, someone's doing this. And then from there, um, then that show was went away. But I met like Seth. Mm-hmm. Like, he and I were office mates. And uh, um, there's a lot of people on that show that were awesome. Rodney Rothman, someone else I... So that's met. where you built a relationship with Seth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and Jason Siegel, who, yeah. who was a recurring guest star or whatever. Then that show goes away uh it was canceled or whatever and then i had another year of trying to get on shows and right. it wasn't uh happening and then judd asked me if i wanted to write a script with him <clears throat> that was for us a, uh, a screenplay and i was i was also at the time working writing screenplays for myself when did you get married i got married uh in 2005 so after this yeah yeah i got married after this my my first screenwriting gig was around when my wife moved out to not moved out. You were, you were in a long. Moved, di- well, I was in a long distance relationship. Where briefly. was she? She was in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. How did you meet someone in Ann Arbor? She also she went to Harvard. We met through friends. Oh, so yeah. good story. <laughs> <laughs> she went to Harvard. What did she do? She uh, is a novelist. Really? But for she wrote a, she wrote a book and then she's now she's been uh, mom. Two so writers, like, huh? How many writers. kids do you have? We have two. We have two daughters. Really? Yeah. How old are they? Six and one. How's that going? It's going great. Five year gap. Yeah. It's a long Five one. Year gap. Yeah. Was that a plan? No, mm. that was not a plan. Yeah. The, the first one was easy. The second one required a lot of science. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get so, it. But yeah. you always wanted two. Um. Yes. We wanted two. So, so what movie did you write with Judd? We I we wrote a movie for uh, Sandler. Uh, that didn't happen, but it was a good experience. Um, I mean. It, 
we wrote the script. So this that. is before Judd is Judd, really? Yeah. Right. This is before Judd is Judd. And then this, he... Yeah. Okay. What was that movie about? Uh, it was about like a middle child, like this big family uh-huh. um, who's like a disaster. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, and then we wrote... Uh, and then he asked me to write Fun with Dick and Jane with him. That's a rewrite, right? That was, yeah, it was a remake of the... George the, Siegel. George Siegel one, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That didn't do great, right? It weirdly did do well. It did. Yeah. It's, you know. Who it, was in that again? It was Jim Carrey and Tia Leone, uh, oh. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tia Leone. Like, yeah. I love her. And Alec Baldwin's playing a little bit of what he played on later on 30 Rock. Uh-huh. It's like that kind of character a little bit. Um, Jim Carrey, too, who you worked with again. Yeah. I worked with him on Yes. So, so that, so now you've made him, you've written a movie that's become a movie. Yeah. And then what happened? And then, and then that started to get me screenwriting work. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I started to write, you know, scripts basically and doing rewrite jobs and stuff and then um so secret rewrite jobs secret rewrite jobs on what uh the let me think uh i, re- I worked on this movie called just my luck mm-hmm. that was a Lindsay lohan film so that was a rewrite job i did yeah <laughs> you know movies like that it's sort of an ironic title i know if it's not about drug addiction <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first one where she started to be weird I uh-huh. think I think that was the first. But when one. when someone does that, like I don't know that people really know that 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 people that writers get sort of they get to do passes on scripts and they get paid for that doctor script doctor work. Yeah, and that's a good gig. It is, yeah. Because it, it's uh, you know, you don't you don't really have anything to lose. No. And uh, but you did a lot of that. Yeah, I did a lot of that. Well, it started first punch up during undeclared. I I wrote a bunch of screenplays that were bad. Right. I was to, to kind of learn how to do it. Right. And then I wrote one a spec script that was good that didn't sell or you know anything but got me meetings and uh-huh you know, so yeah so that the, so that's a good gig so yeah. then what, what how do you get from there to direct forgetting sarah marshall um it was so judd had done uh super bad and 40 old he'd produced super bad and had done 40 old virgin and uh-huh. was doing or he, or he was doing he was doing knocked up that's what it was. he was doing knocked up and it was coming together well and he had a he was trying to become Judd. <laughs> like, he right. had a lot of leverage. Yeah. And uh, Siegel told me about... Jason and I really bonded, kind of, during Undeclared, and uh-huh. we kind of found a lot of the same stuff funny. Yeah. Uh, like, I always say, it's like grown men crying. Yeah. is kind of what we both find interesting. Well, he seems to be able to play that weird, vulnerable dude a lot. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of heart to it. Whether it's genuine or not, I don't know, but he can play it. Oh, it's totally genuine. Yeah. Yeah, and the and we did that on Undeclared. The, the, the episode I wrote was for him, and he finds out... In that episode, that his girlfriend, his long distance girlfriend, cheated on him with Jay Baruchel, and he comes to beat up Jay Baruchel. Right. So, uh, g- girlfriend played by Carla Gallo. So they, that was like, and that I mean that is very similar to Sarah Marshall, you know, in certain ways right. emotionally. So, um, so yeah, so we really, you know, he also is a Jew who doesn't look totally Jewish. He went to an Episcopal school. Uh huh. So we <laughs> we had, we found that out much later. Right. We had those, you know. Right. But um, but yeah. So then I said to so Siegel was telling me about. Uh, his script for getting Sarah Marshall, but he didn't have a ton of screenwriting experience. It was his script. It was his script, yeah. yeah. So then he, uh, so then I said to Judd, if I kind of guide Siegel through the writing process, help him, will you support me as a director? And Judd, you know, I mean, TV shows, writers are kind of, are kind of the directors a little bit, you know? Sure. Um, and Judd, you know, was like, sure, and supported me, you know, to What do does that. that mean, support you do? Like, go to the studio and say, I want Nick to direct this. And he's producing it. He's producing it. And he had leverage, because like, Version had done movies. well. Yeah. Knocked up was gonna do clearly good, coming out well, and Super Bad was coming out well. So that's your first directing gig, a big movie. Yeah, and yeah. and how do you step up for that? Other it than was... just the confidence that you have because of who you are, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I mean it was. Uh, I I the main thing that was really hard was cover learning coverage. Right. So like I didn't understand coverage. Judd loves coverage. He loves coverage. Yes. But I literally I don't I don't mean like. How, how much coverage to shoot, but I literally didn't understand how to where to move the camera and eye lines and all of that. That's stuff. why you got a good DP, right? Yeah, I got a great DP. Right. Uh, this guy Russ also broke, um, who but, says things like, "Hey, you might, you might want to shoot the other guy from that side." Yes, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, oh, I knew that." And there's I some knew- some of the eye lines don't work in that movie. Oh, There's really? like a joke that doesn't work because the eye lines are messed up because I didn't I didn't yeah, know what that, I was doing. I, I actually uh, was trying to pay more attention to that on my TV show because Judd actually encouraged me to direct an episode. Yeah, did which, you like it? Which I did. Well, it was hard because I'm in every scene and that we, seems. We what, do you, what do you do? You, you trust your DP a lot. Okay, and you uh, you know you direct you know from the set. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, actually looking at playback and stuff, I can only do if absolutely necessary because we didn't have time. How many days per episode? Three. Wow. So 
That's so like, I'd like to try it again with a little more um, uh, engagement. But it was a great experience. Yeah. No, it's it's directing so much fun. So, it's but you fun. you had your back covered. Like Judd was there, and he knew what he was doing. Your DP was good, and he yeah. knew what he was doing. So you were. It, it was a cushy way to learn how to do it. Yes. Yeah. And I had, there was also Judd actually, he's really around for pre production, for writing, for casting, but then he, he was only around for a week or two during the shoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this producer, Shauna Robertson, who. Uh, so you were kind of on your own. That must have been a little nerve wracking. It is, but Shauna was there and she really helped me a lot too. So uh -huh. there was, she, she, you know, she'd produced a bunch of stuff and so knew, knew what she was doing. And then Russ, Russ, the, the DP also knew what he was doing. So, but yeah, it was, I mean, after the movie turned out well or fine or whatever, Jason said to me that first week, I was worried. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like, this was not, he he thought it was going poorly because I just didn't know, I was learning how to do it. Were you, you know? panicky? Um, not really because I, I, because I asked a lot of questions. I well, think, I, like, I think, well, that's the testament to what, you know, why you're successful in a way is that if you're not, if you're going to be the guy that's sort of like, all right, I, mean, I am new to this, you all know I'm new to this. Yeah. And, you know, I need to, to learn, but I'm not going to freak out. Yeah, right, like exactly. cuz I think like when I talk to directors, you know, something that they share is they they generally keep their shit together in terms of the logistics of things. I'm not, they may get passionate about yelling at actors or whatever, but you're managing an awful lot of responsibility. Yeah. And you have to be able to do that. Yeah. And you have to like a lot of a lot of the advice I got was don't pretend you know something if you don't. Sure. Ask did, a question. Ask, so I was constantly asking questions. And that made Jason was. nervous? No, that's not what made him nervous. What made him nervous is I didn't understand coverage. So I literally didn't understand how to shoot the scene we were, <laughs> we were doing. No, what made him nervous was totally legitimate. No, yeah. seeing your director ask a lot of questions isn't... That's like, oh, great. He wants to know how this works. Right. But not knowing how to direct is Not a knowing how to direct. <laughs> and there being like a half hour break as like I sit with the DP and he draws what eye lines. Like he's literally... They're explaining eye lines explain, to you. explaining eye lines like in the Sydney Lumet making movies book right <laughs> it's like, like yeah that's what made him nervous i also the first week i didn't know like i was i was second guessing my cuz it's all tone yeah. with comedy it's all tone which is why i think writer comedy writers can make good if you have social skills it make you can make a good uh, director cuz it's all tone it's it's more that than visuals it's like, not like what, what do you mean like what's funny like you you know what a comedy writer knows what's funny you know what the emotional weight of a scene is yeah the, the point of a scene and the, and, how, and what's funny about it you know and so like for example i've worked on i've written movies where i see the scene after they've shot it and the director just didn't get what was funny about it and it's like just what a, movie uh, i can't i don't want to i don't want to insult insult movies but like but okay <laughs> i just don't want to yeah, you don't want to put that shit out there no, you know? you're right you're, you're right, right. You know? yeah sure but you've but seen it happen. i've seen it happen okay yeah and so but anyways i was second guessing my tone so another thing i was doing was having jason be way too broad yeah in some stuff and i would get different levels you know i'd shoot him being grounded and normal which is you know the funniest right <laughs> obviously the only you know and then i'd shoot really broad stuff and judd called me and was like what what is going on there why are you shooting this crazy broad stuff and i was like i'm just i'm trying to learn i don't know yeah um so yeah and he said stop it he just, I, then I started to just go with more with my instinct of like, let's make this not, you know, not as broad. So then after that, you did some writing. Yes. And that movie turned out okay. Yes, man. Yeah, that turned, yeah, turned out well. Turned out fine. Yeah. Um, I wrote that and then, yeah, that actually coincided with Sarah Marshall. I wrote that and then had to go leave it to do, uh, Sarah, to direct Sarah Marshall and then Jared Paul and Andy Mogul rewrote it. Uh huh. Um, very funny guys. And then you get to do get him to the Greek. Yeah. And wrote and direct that. Yes. And yeah. that was based on those characters that you had. Yeah. Familiarity with. Yeah. Well, Jonah and Russell had really good chemistry at the table read, and it, and it seemed really funny to have them do a movie on. Like they had just great chemistry. I was like, I wanted to see what. Would I think Jonah is a pretty good adapter. Like I think that like he could probably have pretty good chemistry with anybody. There's yeah. just some weird thing about him that you know whether it's serious or comedic, you know he. He knows how to to sort of be in relationship comedically with somebody. Or yeah, even serious. it's a weird. It's a, it's true. He's really good. And and also you could tell when in their scenes together they were really trying to figure each other out. Right. Which is always a good premise for a comedy. Uh -huh. so like most of that most again to the Greek is them just trying to figure each other out. Like that's yeah, and like that a, was a fun romp. Yeah, it was a good romp. Yeah, it was a good romp. And then Gulliver's Travels you <clears throat> wrote so that that didn't fall on you whatever mm -hmm. happened there. Yeah. Uh, then you did a Muppets movie. Um. Yes, I wrote the Muppets with Siegel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and was James Bowen. It was really fun. Yeah, it was what, incredible. Was that a passion project, or did Jason think like you know this is going to be a cash cow? No, it was passion project. He he. Uh, after I think it was right before Sarah Marshall came out, but we had fun collaborating on that. He uh, 
called me. He had a general meeting kind of at Disney. Mm-hmm. And they said, what are you interested in? He said, what are you guys doing with the Muppets? And they said, we don't know. And then he ended up uh, he ended up um, calling me and saying, do you want to write a Muppet movie? And I was like, of course. And we wrote it over many years. It took a while to get the ball rolling at the studio. And you got to deal with the Muppet people. And the Muppet, yeah. We got we got to deal with the Muppet people, yeah. The Henson uh, Organization. Yes, the Henson Corporation. Who say things like, uh, this puppet can't do this. They do. They, there are a lot of rules for yeah, the Muppets. There are. Yeah. How do you know about the rules? I'm just speculating. There are a ton of rules. Like what? The they never refer to themselves as puppets. Uh-huh. They're not puppets. They're yeah. like people or creatures or whatever. Right. Um. That was one of the rules. Yeah. They're never mean. Right. You know, there are a bunch of rules. Really? Yeah. What was the weirdest rule? Uh. Oh, the weirdest rule is that the the uh, Camilla the chickens don't talk. Right. They just won't talk. Right. So that was like. So you got to take that line out. Yeah. <laughs> like we had a joke that like they say one word and they're like, yeah. no, the chickens don't talk. <laughs> And we're like, come that, on. And that is the name of your book. Chickens Don't Talk. Yeah. And, uh, and other stories from the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's going good for you. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> Thanks, I Thanks very much. I didn't mean to be dickish. No, I liked it. And your father and you have a wife. Yes, a wife Parents and Parents are still married. Mm-hmm. But this... <laughs> so why are thing. you in therapy? Why... I was just getting very anxious. I don't know why. Oh, I was getting really anxious. I have that too. Yeah. Well, how is it manifesting itself? Not being able to sleep uh-huh. was a big one. Uh, and just generally being, just general anxiety about it. It's about, a horrible feeling. It's a horrible, yeah. Have well, you, are you in, are you in therapy for that? I, well, no, I'm in therapy for a lot of things. Yeah. But that's sort of a new thing. It's like, it's dread. Like, yeah. It, mind manifests itself and like, like I'll have a moment where I'm like, okay, everything's good, but oh fuck, I got to do that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and also like why why am I incapable of relationships? But that's not your problem. <laughs> why? Why are you? Not why is that not my problem? I don't know, man. But the anxiety is it just part became of it. my problem. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they live in it. Okay. <laughs> um, so what, what do you what do you like what what are you anxious about? Um, it would. I'm trying to think. Just like generally, like am like. What do I'm? What am I gonna do when I wake up in the morning? <laughs> right. You know, like ang- general. It's a lot of like but you're busy, and this will sound you're stupid. Busy, this right? will sound jackass, but you it's make a, a Greer love. Yeah, make Greer exactly. I do stuff like that to try to like you know. But it's a lot of like, holly, like a lot of yeah, that kind of anxiety. Like mm-hmm. just the 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 day. Yeah, the day daily anxiety. Yeah. Huh. So, so yeah, it is a little dread. Like it's, before you go there's to bed. Dread. Like, yeah. Before you go to bed at night, like uh, yeah, or I'll just wake up, you know, early. Not yeah, sleep that early. well, right? Yeah, you know, and just be like, why? And I don't know why I'm anxious because generally, you know, I feel do you have a lot relatively of, happy? Do you have a right? You know, but it's like, but yeah, is it? Have you? Are you finding any of it? It's just sort of existential. Like, you know, what's the point? I think some of it might be that. Yeah, I think some of it's right because you've had a tremendous amount of success. You're not even forty. Yeah. So like then the sort of like, well, what happens from forty to fifty? Yeah. And uh, I think I was really focused on like career stuff, like everyone, sure. you know. And then there's like, and then there's something like, well. It, this is it. Is, but see, isn't that the worst you know? feeling? Like yeah. even now, like I'm doing better than I've ever done before. Mm-hmm. Like I'm making a living and it's an honest living as yeah. far as I can tell. Yes. That, you know, at some point, you know, and it was, I was never a careerist. I never really thought about making money, which was a, an issue that I always had, but, but I, I, I'm doing okay. But then like when, when all that shit is in place and you're doing, you know, million dollar business, mm. you realize like, well, that didn't do it. <laughs> I know. And, and you got two beautiful kids and you got a life and it's like, well, that, how come I'm, what it, what what now? Yeah, to have to rejigger your to make that obviously it's important and it's a great thing, but to still have that weird kind of like well, what what, what I, next? I did it all. What next? Do you know how to have fun? Yeah, outside of baking. Yeah, no. In the moment, I'm having fun, but then I have this anxiety, and and it is and it's this feeling of like, well, this is a this is a moment where I've got my health, I've got this great family, everything's yeah. going well, right. so I shouldn't have to rely on like whatever to be right. happy i should right. i should just be happy with what i've got because right. you know oh so and part like, of that part of that i think is like uh gratitude Tricky. yeah it's gratitude and also part of it's being like i think surrounded by the industry by the hollywood industry constantly Monsters. in los angeles <laughs> is like it's a it's it's I, I love la for a variety of reasons but i think that is something that can be 
Well, it's a very um, insulated and bizarre world. Exactly. And, you know, the difference between public persona and personal lives. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, just people doing their jobs out there, but there's also a lot of weirdness Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in terms of priorities and quality of life problems. It's so public. Like, when you do a movie that doesn't do well, it's really public. Or I mean, in this case, I did a movie that did well, that's public. But it's, it's... and it's, but it's, also there's the secret knowledge of, you know, what people's real lives are like. Yeah. I mean, you're on the inside. Yeah. And there's that weird balance between public information and personality and, and failures <laughs> and, and just the lives people are living. Yeah. That you, you're, there's almost this weird oath of secrecy <laughs> that, that just by virtue of the fact that you're on the inside and doing well in show business, you have to be diplomatic. <laughs> about right but how you feel about how you feel yeah. and, and and you know and what about th- that guy's not doing well should we be concerned <laughs> don't worry there are people handling that right. but i have to do a thing it's like it's not your problem right. oh, okay okay it's <laughs> totally <laughs> also like the like you know i've never had a career high like neighbors the, right the weekend after it opened i got i got a horrible cold horrible like, i get it uh, yeah one of those colds and i was in a really bad mood and i was like what was wrong with me right what's wrong with me i have a cold yeah <laughs> it's right. gonna it's, bum me out yeah 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 and yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. i'm glad i'm in therapy <laughs> <laughs> that this cold is bumming me out <laughs> i think it's, it's similar like my brother's in dc and that's a sim- also a company town and it's yeah. like ev- everything's about politics and it's it's and also, not, it's, it's not reality. It's, but it's, it's, a, it's a similar social dynamic. Yeah. Like there are things you can say and can't say. And, you know, exactly. there, there are things sort of like, well, somebody, you know, get him some coffee and we'll try to make this right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really, it's exactly the same because it's also a star culture there. Yeah. The stars are politicians. Right. It's a very similar, like, very similar thing. All, all his stories are exactly the same as mine. And all the, well, yeah, all the that, insecurities that, are the same. Well, there's that old saying that po- politics is show business for ugly people, right? <laughs> right. Something like that. Except I'm in comedy, so it's the same. Politics <laughs> yeah. politics and comedy are... There's not a lot of attractive people in comedy. <laughs> oh, there, there are. <laughs> there are a few. Yeah, they're, there they're few. charming. They're charming. And cute. Yeah. Yeah, usually. <laughs> well, it was great talking to you. Yes. Did we cover it all? I think so. Do you think your dad's going to be okay with this? I think he's going to be fine. He's going right. to love it. One more chance to throw him under the bus. No. Great guy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Cool. Thanks. Okay, that's it. He's a good guy. Artisanal bread. Harvard's fine. I like, he was a nice guy. I'm glad he stopped by. Uh, go to WTFPod.com for all your WTF Pod needs. Uh, check out the schedule. Check out the where I'm going to be. Got a few things coming up. Oh, my God. I got to start making television again. Got to start making television again. Writing television. Got to finish a new hour. Tighten that thing up. Then tighten it up, man. I don't know where Deaf Black Cat is. I'm not going to freak out, though. I think someone else is just feeding him. I drink that smoothie too fast. Boomer lives!